Good morning. Let's join in singing together our opening hymn number 410 on page one of our bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise 
make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together. A great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble, for I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But Jesus holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness. But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho, and he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then he sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, good morning. It's been a while since uh, we preached from here, and I can see that it was set for Irv, not for regular height people. It is good to be here again with you all this morning to preach and proclaim the word of God on this beautiful Saturday morning, although it would be a little bit nicer if it was cooler, but oh well. Today's gospel reading takes us to the gospel according to Mark. No bias, because I bear the same name. But we see in this particular gospel reading, and I'm going to jump right to that story, that there is this blind beggar. But we do need to take a step back and go a little bit before this particular reading. What occurred in the stories that leads up to this particular encounter between Jesus and Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus? That's literally his name, the son of Timaeus. There is the encounter with Peter where Peter says, Jesus, you, no, you can't, you can't leave us, right? Because Jesus says, I'm going to leave, I'm going to die, and you are going to be, a, be left behind. Um, and, and of course, a helper will come. And Peter's like, no, 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 that cannot happen. Then there is an encounter with a young rich man who comes to Jesus and asks, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And as Jesus tells him, you've got to leave everything and follow me, the young man decides the cost of following Jesus may be just too great. So sadly, he leaves. Then there is an encounter with uh, the two sons of Zebedee who want to sit at the right hand and the left, and both are arguing about who will sit at the right hand because in their perspective, as Jesus claims or reclaims the kingdom of David, his throne, they want a piece of that pie. In all of these encounters, individuals come and ask Jesus what they want from him, which is far different from what Jesus desires for us to want from Jesus. 
And then there's Bartimaeus, who is important enough to have been named because there are a lot of people who come in other stories of encounters with Jesus who are not specifically named. Bartimaeus is specifically named. And so why is this significant? There is this beggar, and we don't know how he became blind, but we know that anyone with any physical ailments or inabilities or disabilities or handicaps, whichever label people put, other than fully functioning physical capabilities, those people were outcast from society. And they were really the the far off marginalized of their society. And they had nothing, nothing that they could other than to beg for their physical existence. Begging for scraps of food, begging for little change, whatever they could to just merely survive physically. It is this marginalized, neglected, forgotten, uncared for individual who truly sees the power of Jesus and who truly sees what Jesus can do for him. And Jesus asks that question, what do you want me to do for you? Now, the irony here is that Bartimaeus is blind, right? But as you look at this gospel reading, at one point, we can safely assume that Bartimaeus was able to see because he asks Jesus, let me see again. Let me regain my sight. The assumption, therefore, is that at some point, Bartimaeus was able to see physically. And something in his life happened, physically, spiritually, I don't know, but he is no longer able to see. Once he was part of the community, once he was part of the normal society, once he was not marginalized, and as soon as he lost his sight, he became the marginalized. And maybe metaphorically, there's also the spiritual aspect of his blindness. Perhaps that spiritual blindness is that he decided, perhaps, at some time in his life, he did not need anyone or anything else, that somehow he could just do it on his own. Whatever that reason was, now he sees. Though physically blind, he sees spiritually who the author and the perfecter of his faith is. Who is the true authority? And that is Jesus Christ. And he sees his need. His own need for the grace, mercy, and love of God. That which is so freely given unconditionally for all of God's people. So Bartimaeus shouts out, Son of David, have mercy on me, recognizing that Jesus is indeed the prophesied Messiah. This outcry, this begging for mercy, is akin to what we often see in our liturgy, Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison, Lord, have mercy on me. And it reminds me of my own need. It reminds me of times when I am in disbelief, when I am in doubt, when I have been so wrapped up with my busyness, even for the sake of the kingdom of God, in my work as a chaplain in the U.S. Army, educating other chaplains, and I get so wrapped up in my tasks, in my need for making sure that my program is successful and that people acknowledge that I am indeed a good chaplain and a good educator, that I get so wrapped up in my daily needs that I forget that I am ultimately in need of Christ's mercy. 
There, but for the grace of God, go I. That's not my own coin to sing. Several different theologians or, or patriarchs of the church have been attributed to that saying, but it's a constant reminder that I am called into a relationship with God, and outside of that relationship, I really can't do a whole lot. I have my abilities, yes, I have my gifts and my talents, I can go so much. But it is that grace and mercy of God that then helps me in my daily journey to remember that I am God's and I am in need of God and that all that I do is for the glory of God. And whatever God then does beyond that, beyond my own capabilities each day are God's and not mine. But you know, we can all get wrapped up, right? We can all so easily get wrapped up in the importance of me, myself, and I, and our lives. But we often forget our very need to be in a relationship with Jesus, a personal and intimate, loving relationship with Jesus Christ, the very source of life. And that daily is our choice. And that's the beauty of our faith, that there is God's will and there is free will. Previously, as a Calvinist, I kind of lessened the free will part. But the more I grow into understanding what it means to truly live as a Christian, every day I am given the free will to decide. And even in those times when I have been in the darkest moments of my own faith journey, I come back again and again because I realize I need the grace and mercy of Christ. And that then is my choice based on my faith to come back to that faith and say, Lord, have mercy on me. I need thee every hour. And so therefore, Bartimaeus, who was once able to see, became blind, and now he is able to see yet again. Does that remind you of a particular hymn? I was once blind, but now I am able to see. Right? I won't sing it for you just to spare you your ear pain. But it's one of my favorite hymns because it's a constant reminder that without Jesus, I am indeed blind. But with him, I can truly see. May it be so for you. Amen. Standing as we're able, let us reaffirm our faith in God, making use of the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered a death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For Joe, our president, Greg, our governor, and Ron, our mayor. For this community, the nation, and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, David and Rayford, our bishops, Irv, Reagan, and Mark, our priests, and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, remembering especially Joe, Alex, Denise Ray, Jean, Pam Marmon, John Milliken, Mimi, Kay Johnson, Patty, Dan Hankey, Ann, Hortense Madrano, Judith Field, Sarah Helen, Ramiro Ramirez, Gloria, Dan Bacon, Hans Helen, Cindy, Mark, John, Troy, Larry, Stephen Ramsey, Alex Miranda Fontenot, Anna Luisa Rubio, Louis Luis Felipe Rubio, and those we now remember either silently or aloud. We pray for those serving in the armed forces, both here and abroad, and those who are serving in harm's way. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life and which we remember now, either silently or aloud. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died that they may find have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. It is great to be with you all as we gather on this beautiful Sunday morning to worship and to give glory to God here at St. Luke's Church. 
If you're visiting this morning or if you're tuning in online for the first time, I want to welcome you especially, and I hope that you'll stay afterwards and enjoy some refreshments and some coffee with us in the parlor. That'll give us a chance to welcome you more fully and answer any questions you might have about life at St. Luke's. And this is your first time with us here. If you're here, uh, I hope you'll uh, leave some contact information so that we can get in touch with you after the service. You can take a look at the QR codes that are in the pew racks that you can make use of, or you could fill out a Connect card in the narthex on your way out. Either way, that'll help us to get in touch with you uh, and follow up with you after our worship this morning. And before our worship continues, I'll share with you a few reminders about things going on in the life of the congregation. Uh, first of all, um, we had lots of classes at 10 o'clock for people of all ages, and those will continue in the coming weeks. So if you came right at 11, I encourage you to come at 10 next week and take advantage of all those classes. Today was a big transition for some of our classes for young people. So the fourth and fifth graders began their journey through the Bible, and that will continue in the weeks to come. And our middle school class got off to a good start as well. So if you have questions about those classes, you can talk to me or others on the staff, and we can get you pointed in the right direction to get to your classes next week. As you take a look upstairs, you can see that the pipe organ is looking great, and uh, Russell reports that the progress on it continues to go real well. The initial voicing is complete, so a big milestone this coming Wednesday when the choir will be rehearsing with the new pipe organ for the very first time. So they are excited about that, and it looks like, and it sounds like, we will get to enjoy hearing the new pipe organ for the first time next Sunday. So get the word out to your friends and come on back and uh, I've already gotten a sneak preview, so I can assure you it's going to be great, and I'll look forward to sharing that with you next week. And we are on track for the dedication of the organ on November 28th. That's the Sunday after Thanksgiving. We'll get more word out about that. That's going to be a wonderful event in the afternoon. Uh, Bishop David Reed plans to be with us as we um, ask God's blessings on this new instrument as it inspires us to lift our voices to sing God's praises. So I'll look forward to seeing you here next Sunday. Next Sunday is also Halloween, so if any uh, children want to get a head start on dressing up for Halloween, if you come in your costumes, I might invite you up to say a special prayer of blessing for you. So I'll look forward to seeing if we have any costumes. I guess that would apply to adults if they want to come in costumes also. Uh, we'll see what we get next week. Nancy Hawkins is here this morning, and I'd like to invite her to share a little bit of her story, and we'll see how it might inspire us as we look at our own stories today. Nancy? Good morning. Um, thank you for being here today, and thank you for taking the time to listen to my story. I have a really long commute to work every day, and I use that time to think. Lately, I have been thinking a lot about stewardship and how the concept of the, using the things we are given, time, talent, treasure, and expected as Christians to use responsibly to better the world is intrinsically linked to my faith journey. I have also thought a lot about hoarding. Now, I am not a serious hoarder. I am not going to end up on TV yet. But I do have a problem with acquiring vintage handbags, okay, really any handbags, fabric, and Starbucks points. I have more of all of these things than I need or use, yet I am loath to use them, Starbucks points, or give them away, everything else. Hoarding comes from a mindset of scarcity and fear Fear of not being in control over whatever it is you think you need to control. And I relate it to my faith stewardship journey in this way. Even though I knew I had some gifts, and even though I wanted to share them, I feared that people would think I was not good enough. I had no usable talent, so I hoarded my talent. That is a scarcity mindset at work. Time, I just didn't want to give any time. How would there be enough for me if I put it someplace else? Treasure, there was absolutely no way I could make any financial commitments to anything. How would there ever be enough to pay the bills and meet the needs of my family 
it just couldn't happen. And these things that framed my scarcity mindset permeated my decision-making in all areas, including my faith. And so that was how I was living in this scarcity when I started attending St. Luke's regularly. But God had a plan. My husband and I had been married at St. Luke's. Our kids were baptized there, welcomed into the body of Christ in all their scabby post-chickenpox glory. And of course, like a good Episcopalian, I made sure they went through First Communion and Confirmation. I attended because they had to. I went through the familiar motions until then church attendance became a regular thing. But I lived in scarcity, wanting to live in fullness. But God had a plan. And some minions at St. Luke's working for him. They saw some things in me that I didn't, and they invited me in. Can you be an acolyte parent? Lisa Petrowski. It's just phone calls once a month. Yeah, I think I could do that. Would you like to be an altar guild? A secret dream all my life? Asked Nancy Avalar. It is just once a month. Yeah, I can do that. Can you use a computer? Asked Aline Woodring. We could use you at the greed door while you're on summer break. I did that. I'll head up the Acolyte Guild if you'll do it with me, said Michael Mortensen, and I said, okay. And I found that each time I accepted an invitation, VBS, teach a little Sunday school, be a verger, I was being filled. I had found a faith community that valued me and held me up. My journey began to feel as if I was giving back to God and to this place that was giving so much to me. And finally, I came to making a financial commitment. I wanted to pledge. I knew I should pledge. I felt a calling to pledge. But that scarcity mindset was still there. I knew that if I wanted to get out of that place of scarcity, I had to face this one last thing. So I did. I filled out a pledge card, put down an amount that I thought I could handle, and turned it in. And because I know me, at least this well, I arranged to have my pledge automatically withdrawn every month. I have increased my pledge every year since then, even in unsure times, times that I did not get a raise, times when there were medical bills. And I have discovered that I have enough that I always had enough. I have more than enough. And while there are times that I still get fearful, fearful, I know that I have a faith community that holds me up and that God has a plan. I don't have to live in scarcity. And in case you were wondering, it is difficult. But I'm working on the handbag problem. I give them away to the green door now so someone else can benefit. I use my Starbucks points, knowing full well that I'll get two for one the next time I get use the app. However, I am keeping the fabric. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy. I hope uh, Nancy's story will inspire you to remember uh, how the Lord has blessed you and how you can make good use of your gifts and talents and your resources. And we'll hear more stories in the next few weeks, and then we'll get a chance in mid-November to pledge our support of our common life here at St. Luke's. And so I hope that as the Lord has inspired Nancy, you too will be inspired to do what you can to ensure that this place continues to thrive. I love sharing the church with Nancy, and I love sharing it with each of you. And so I'll look forward to joining with you as we step into the future. So as we celebrate uh, what the Spirit has done in Nancy's life, I wonder what else we might get to celebrate today. Is anybody celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this week who might like to come forward for a prayer? Emily, your birthday is tomorrow, right? All right, she turns 55. Charles, when is your birthday? This coming Saturday? All right. Sylvia, when is your birthday? 
on the 28th, and Roberta's birthday was the 15th. So, wow, we have lots to celebrate. So, as we give thanks to God for the blessings that God has shared with our sisters and our brother, let's pray for continued blessings in the days to come. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Enjoy. Happy birthday. We'll continue our worship with the offertory as we prepare the table for Holy Communion. During the offertory, we'll enjoy an anthem offered by the choir, and then we'll continue with the great thanksgiving. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his court. The Lord be with you. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with Saint Luke the Evangelist and with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. the gifts of God for the people of God.
David Schrantz will be making a pastoral visit after the service, taking communion to one of our brothers who cannot come to church. David does this on your behalf, so I hope you'll join me as we commission him for this visit, and you'll find the commissioning on page 11 in your bulletins. David, I send you forth, bearing these holy gifts, that the one to whom you go, Joe Lee Hensley, may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, inspire you this day and remain with you always. Amen.